coming up. Jeremy Clarkson's Amazon show will be called The Grand Tour. A wedding guest gets an email from the bride with a gift adjustment request. A hydraulic... Pr- a hy- <laughs> I still got the British accent in me, sorry. <clears throat> um, a hydraulic press proves that diamonds are sadly not forever. Mm. A gold toilet called America is to debut in New York's Guggenheim. No one wants to buy this 55-bed, 55-bath, $3.5 million house in Texas. I can't imagine why. I wonder why. It's huge. And according to Pornhub, Overwatch porn is getting out of hand. A drone over a Middle Ages festival is taken down by a spear. And the first penis transplant in the U.S. was performed in Boston. And more on this episode of Watts. everyone and thank you for joining us once again this is the wide open talk show for monday may the 16th 2016 i'm donovan atkinson and as always i'm joined by my co-host and good friend samuel lewis hey sam how was your weekend going great it was it, it was fantastic went to a magic meet up in lexington got to test a new a new bit on everyone and it seemed to work it's always good when that happens so i'm doing good well great i had a I had a typical weekend. Um, yeah, that was it. Pretty much typical. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we we did some moving around uh, Saturday. Uh, we had to take one desk out of a location in our living room so that we could move another desk that's sort of at the tail end of our kitchen so that we could get prepared to put an upright freezer in that my mother has decided to give me, which is fantastic. I mean, you know, free stuff is always great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. So uh, that's that was pretty much the Sunday, and then my wife actually hosted a baby shower for a coworker on Sunday while I hung around the house and did clothes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Domestic husband, anyone? Anyway, <laughs> so this is a uh, call-in show, and that number is two two nine five one eight three five two five two two nine five one eight three five two five. And so we're going to start right off here. You um. You know more about this than I do, uh, Mm -hmm. because you're a big fan of the original show, which is on the BBC, or was on the BBC, and I guess it's been revamped. So I'm going to let you you take the lead on this one. Yeah, because Top Gear is getting ready to actually come out this month, the new version of it. So I'm really curious how it's going to look and everything. But So we've got the three original Top Gear guys obviously doing their show on Amazon. We've been waiting for more details, or at least us original fans of the three have. And apparently the show is going to be called The Grand Tour. And the whole setup of the thing is that they are actually going to be touring around in this sort of big tent setup. Um, And apparently it's a different location every single week. (laughs) So... It's going to be interesting. I don't know if they're going to... I think there was talk about possibly them doing different countries and stuff too, which which means if they show up in America again, chances are someone's going to want to try to shoot them again. <laughs> like, wait, 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 like wait. It, shoot them? Oh, yeah. Um, I believe it was Alabama that they were in. And... Oh, well, hey, there you go. That says it right there. <laughs> Alabama, what do you expect? Must have been. Must have been someone's... Second cousin, uh, brother's niece's um, aunt, four times removed or otherwise known as a wife that probably tried to shoot at him. You can probably find the clip somewhere, but it's about one of the infamous Top Gear clips because honestly, they probably almost died during that whole thing because they had, the producers had handed them the challenge to <clears throat> creatively decorate each other's cars as they drove through this place. With phrases like, oh, I don't know, NASCAR sucks, stuff like that. And they pulled up to this gas station because they had to get some gas. And someone legitimately called up the boys, and the boys legitimately showed up in a truck oh, <laughs> and wow. legitimately chased them down. <laughs> it was it was frightening just to watch it. It was ugh, like, 
It's America getting represented right there, guys. Aren't we proud? That's- I tell you what, if the best that we have to offer is demonstrated by Alabama, I'll just leave that sentence right there. Mm-hmm. I know it was a southern state. I think it was Alabama. I'm not. Oh, for all we know, it could have been Georgia. <laughs> I don't think it was Georgia. It, it might have been, but. <laughs> oh, God. It could have been, but anyway. So the Grand Tour. Mm. Yeah, and of course, I've I've said it before, and I'm saying it again. I'm looking forward to seeing this show. I mean, James May even made the joke. He said, I wanted to call it Nigel or Roger. We needed a name and their names, but apparently we're calling it the Grand Tour, so fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, they said the, the Grand Tour's Facebook page features a video, which I had just played, showing some of the spoof names that were under consideration, including Automates, A Small Puddle of Excellence, and The Ace Biscuit. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I just, I never could get into the original show. I never understood what the, what the allure to it was. I mean, occasionally, and this is the one, is this the same show where they would actually get, like, celebrities to drive? Also, or is yep, that something? Every every episode featured a star in the reasonably priced car. So. Okay. Yeah. And I, the likes of uh, some of the fastest people, hilariously enough, of course, were American actors. <laughs> but uh, Alice Cooper was one of their fastest people that ever drove around that track. I think Tom Cruise may be one of the ones that holds the highest. Um, Representing Britain, though, Simon Cowell was one of the ones that drove the fastest around. So. It was fascinating seeing all these different celebrities drive around in this, because they didn't give them a supercar or anything. They gave them a car me and you would drive right. and told them to go around the track in this thing. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was always quite entertaining and stuff. I mean, they, they had people like Patrick Stewart and everything, so mm-hmm. it was fun. Early reports had suggested the show might be called Gear Knobs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I think the Grand Tour is probably a good a good name. Mm-hmm. I can go with well, that. And, and the appeal of Top Gear was that it was a car show that wasn't necessarily about cars, if that made sense. It really was about just using cars as the way of getting comedy across, which <laughs> ticked some people off because the original Top Gear show was a show, a car show about cars. And then they totally changed the formula and made it more comedy, and it worked better. So... Yeah, but it's so you're saying like, that that when it first started, it was actually more about the cars and less about the comedy. Yeah, totally was, um, because Top Gear actually is a magazine and stuff about mm-hmm. cars, um, and this was just the television version of it. And then they <laughs> they got sillier and it worked way better. So it was it was interesting to watch that adjustment. As it were, although I was never into it whenever it was originally about cars, it didn't really get popular until it got silly. Yeah. Well, you know, comedy or sex, and sometimes sexual comedy, is the best way to sell something. Totally. I mean, why do you think we do this show? Moving on. (laughs) 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 Uh, So... This one is actually reported from uh, WSB TV out of Atlanta. So you you know you have you have wedding gifts that are given mm-hmm. at a wedding, of course. And you know this right here just after I read this, I was kind of scratching my head, and I'm like, "Excuse me." <laughs> I mean, people give gifts if they're smart; they give what they can afford. Uh, they don't go in debt trying to give a gift uh, for a wedding. I would hope not anyway. Um, ironically enough, this actually didn't happen over here in the United States. This actually happened over in uh, Euro Nation. Mm. <laughs> so from the article, it says, you know, there was a guest of a recent wedding, went to an online forum to express her displeasure concerning an email she received from a bride. The post stated that the writer was an ex-colleague of the bride, and she gave the now-married couple a check for 100 pounds or the equivalent of roughly $144. 
But what happened next was the bizarre head-scratching thing. She claims that she got an email from the bride that said, quote, We were surprised that your contribution didn't seem to match the warmth of your good wishes on our big day. In view of your own position, if you wanted to send any adjustment, it would be thankfully received. (laughs) (laughs) Was this bride in her 20s? That's all I have to... (laughs) I I really don't know. Um, (laughs) Wow. Neil joke here, right? Yeah. Uh, But, okay. I'll admit that sometimes... When it comes to getting gifts, cash has a bit of a stigma to it, right? Yeah, I suppose. It's like, oh, you didn't think of anything. You're just going to cop out and give me cash, right? I personally, if anyone ever gives me cash in a specific event or something like that, I am perfectly happy because then I can go spend it on whatever I want it. That me too. Give me cash. Number one, don't give me gifts. (laughs) But number two, if you are going to give me a gift, give me cash because then... Yeah, I can go, (laughs) I'll put it on a bill (laughs) or go buy lunch or something, but I can buy whatever it is I want to buy. You know, it's a lot of times people just don't know what to get people. And then you get that that gift where, oh, well, I'm going to take it back and get something else. But (laughs) yeah. Anyway, I just, the gall of some people, though. (laughs) I know. I mean, it's just uh, disgusting. A <laughs> hundred pounds, and you're going, well, in in light of your situation and in, in your station in life, because the way that read to me was the bride was kicking it back to the former friend saying, look, you make a lot of money, <laughs> and you gave us all these well wishes and, and all this these warm feelings about, you know, you were so happy we were getting married. We were having our special day, but you're only giving us a hundred pounds. You could easily afford five hundred. What's wrong mm-hmm. with you, bitch? I mean, <laughs> you know that's kind of what I, it sounds like. It's coming through. Oh yeah, that that seems to be the attitude that is being <laughs> portrayed in this little message. It's so passive aggressive too. It's just like, ugh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. um, Tell us about this diamond and this press. I actually, I looked through some of the, I didn't know this, this dude had a a YouTube channel. I know, isn't it epic? Um, So some of the stuff, including there's an animated GIF at the bottom of it for one of their, my my favorite ones that I've seen from this so far have to be when Plato is involved. Because of the obvious thing that happens, the pressure builds up and suddenly it goes up. And for anyone, that I should explain what the heck we're talking about. So there is a YouTube channel that is a person that owns a hydraulic press. I'm not sure if it's for business purposes or what. Um, but <laughs> anyway, um, it's it, the hydraulic press is used to crush things. A whole bunch of things. It's just his his whole channel is about using his hydraulic press to crush things. <laughs> yeah. Um. I th- I think they joked on the morning stream this morning that this would totally be a David Letterman sketch until someone actually looked it up and realized that David Letterman had done this at some point in his career. <laughs> so <laughs> so of course it's like it reminded me of things like will it float? This is will it smash? You know mm-hmm. so, stuff like that. Um, but someone apparently donated to him a diamond. So he didn't buy this. It wasn't like he was made out of made out of money or something like that. But it's apparently a 1.2 carat diamond. And <laughs> the thing just shattered. It didn't, it it did. didn't stand a chance. It's, it's beautiful and painful at the same time because you realize the amount of money someone probably spent on that rock just for it to go... <laughs> <laughs> right under the thing. I know, I'm watching it at 40, 40 times slow-mo. Mm. Wow. <laughs> well, as you know, the whole diamond market is a racket anyway. Diamonds aren't oh. actually worth what, what the everybody tries to make it out to be. It was 
the De Beers company actually created that as a marketing scheme way back in the early teens or 20s or somewhere in there. And suddenly, Diamonds had to be a, a, a woman's best friend. <laughs> right. But yeah, this... Uh, so that's Play-Doh in that animated <laughs> GIF at the, at the bottom? Yeah. It's like a tiger or something. Uh-huh. And that is so funny because it goes down and then it goes like squeak up around the uh, the press. Yeah, just because of all of the force and pressure and momentum that's all going into that thing and then it just poof, explodes all around it. <laughs> Science. Science. <laughs> Science. Oh, yeah. Um, interacting with the chat. I uh, just want to answer a question that was brought up. No, we do not know if the friend was single or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess there was a thing like, well, if you're single, then you can probably afford to give more, but I didn't know about that. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about toilets. <laughs> Let's talk about toilets, baby. Now, anyway... <laughs> So this is a gold toilet called America that's going to debut in New York at New York's Guggenheim. It's an 18 karat gold toilet. It's going to be in the New York City's Upper East Side Guggenheim Museum, uh, or it made its debut rather last week in that museum. But the dubbed work of art is having technical difficulties, forcing a delayed unveiling. So. Mm -hmm. It is a fully functional toilet. It's designed as a Kohler replica. It's going to be installed in a private unisex bathroom intended to be used or admired by museum visitors. It was... So this is actually going to be usable. Yeah, it's a usable <laughs> toilet. The artist, uh, Mari, Mari Zio Catalan, anyway... Close enough. <laughs> close enough. Uh, Italian artist behind the toilet, <laughs> known as America, told the New York Times last month that people can enter the tiled room complete with a sink and mirror, quote, just to bask in the toilet's glow, but it becomes an artwork only with someone sitting on it or standing over it, answering nature's call. <laughs> God. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> This is well, terrible. once once you drink America the beer, you can empty yourself Self. with it at America the, the toilet. toilet. Yes, right? very good, very good. I that that was a fantastic connection. I hadn't even thought about that. Oh God! So the museum put out a press release, and in the press release, it said the the new work makes available to the public an extravagant luxury product, seemingly intended for the one percent. <laughs> oh, it's participatory nature in which viewers are invited to make use of the fixture individually and privately. I like how they had to say that individually and privately right. allows for an experience of unprecedented intimacy with an artwork. <laughs> Catalan's toilet offers a wink to the excesses of the art market but also evokes the American dream of opportunity for all, its utility ultimately reminding us of the inescapable physical realities of our shared humanity. That you know, statement that... was full of so much bullshit, I need waiters. I don't, I don't think that's what Bernie was talking about when he was talking about 1% problems. I would just like to say that everyone in America should have a gold toilet. Every single person should be allowed to have their... I, t I totally wanted to go more sweary with that than I wanted to, but uh, <laughs> should be able to drop their excrement in a gold toilet. It should be everyone's right to have it, so say me. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious, a gold toilet, really. <laughs> this is terrible. Specter, let's say, who is Specter? Bruce Cole, former chairman of the National Endowment of the Humanities, wrote. Uh, anyway, somebody told the New York Times that the Occupy movement and growing concerns over the concentration of wealth immediately came to mind when Kathleen pitched the toilet idea to the museum. 
Uh, she said, I think this is going to enter into that discourse and we have to be prepared for the reactions that people are going to have. So when uh, the Guggenheim's director, Richard Armstrong, caught wind of the project, he immediately said, do it! <laughs> do it! <laughs> Just do it! Where Where is Shia when you need him? Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, oh, wow. We got this house. <laughs> 55 bed, 55 bath, $3.5 million house in Texas. This thing looks like a school. Yeah. I am not kidding. It, it looks like a school. 60,000 square feet. Oh, Mona Miller of the of the Christie Buck team at Remax, top realty in Houston, said, everybody has an idea for it and a want for it, but most people don't have the ability to purchase it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think I got three point five million. I might have three point four million in my spare change pocket, but <laughs> so the house was built in two thousand one. It's near the Houston suburb of Pierland, but apparently it's unfinished. It's never been occupied. It's located at twenty three fifty four County Road fifty nine in Manville, and as already stated, listed at three point five million. Designed for at least fifty five bedrooms, fifty five full baths, would be ideal for some type of institutional use. I don't know, crazy house maybe? And uh, <laughs> they said they had a potential buyer signed a contract in October. <laughs> this seems like such a dick move by, by, <laughs> by the city. But the next month, the, uh, the city annexed the site as part of an expansion totaling about 300 acres. <laughs> so then... The, the entire annexation was zoned as residential, and because the would-be buyer wanted to use the house for some type of group home, then the project would have to be, it would require rezoning. So they were like, you know, I'm not going through all of that. I'm out. <laughs> but uh, it does say that city officials, uh, city officials, not officials, but officials, have been open to a variety of proposed uses for the property and seem willing to work with a buyer to get the necessary zoning. They just don't want any, they don't want to convert it into straight up apartment complex. Okay, I, I get that. Why yeah. build a 60,000 <laughs> square foot house with 55 rooms and 55 bathrooms? In what realm of possibility <laughs> do you think you need something like that? Right. Yeah, totally. Plus, I think of it and I go, oh, my God, the amount of cleaning you'd have to do on that dang thing. <laughs> no. I mean, I I have problems taking care of a tiny camper sometimes, let alone a 55-55. No, just no. I know. I mean, your job would be start at the front on Monday morning, finish it up on Sunday afternoon at the end, and start over again Monday morning. It's ridiculous. Terrible. Okay. Overwatch. Mm. And all I'll say is, bound chicken, wow, wow. Anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, for those who have been living with their head under a rock or in the sand, Overwatch is Blizzard's uh, latest video game. It's uh, a, a really unique first-person shooter. But... Because of some of the characters that are in the game, apparently, according to Pornhub statistics, the adult entertainment website saw an 817% increase in Overwatch searches on the first day of the beta. <laughs> We're talking the May, 5, the, the May 5th public beta. Yeah. Now, for those that pre-ordered, it went, open beta on the 3rd, but for the general public, it went open beta on the 5th. So they got a chart here, and you can see, you know, la, 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 then it's like, wow, you know, way up there. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is the same video game that had the whole suggestive pose news about Tracer, and Blizzard came out, and didn't necessarily, I mean, some people or screaming censorship whenever they did it, but according to them, mm -hmm. they were like, well, we never really liked that pose anyway. 
which, okay, I'll take them at their word on that one. I mean, uh, you know, big deal. So anyway, yeah. they, they toned down the, the wind pose for that. So um, it says, during the opening day of the beta, by far the most searched for thing on Pornhub with respect to Overwatch was Tracer. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, why do you think that is? Give me your opinion. on Why, why do you think that Tracer is such an easy target for the, the porn aspect? Well, first of all, she's going to be the most recognizable one because she's plastered all over the Overwatch uh, advertisements, no matter what. She's the she's the cover character. There's not actually a physical... Co- well, there is because of consoles. So I take that back. She's the cover character <laughs> for this thing. So, of course, they're going to lampoon that character first. That tends to be what they first do, right? Because it's, it's the thing that everyone's going to notice. Uh, maybe her tomboyish aspects to her or something. I don't know. I I got a weakness for tomboys, but that doesn't mean I'm going to look it up. Tracer porn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Incognito. Tracer porn. Oh, oh sorry. Of, Back to the show. Of, of all of the characters, though, because some of these don't feel right. If you were to do this, right? If you if you just take them all as a whole, every female character, some guy stuff out there too, probably. But let's let's just focus on the female characters. Mm-hmm. Some of them just doesn't feel right. Whenever you put the phrase "that person porn" attached to it, right? Like mercy porn. No, no, I don't. I don't want to see mercy in any compromising positions like that. It just feels I, wrong. I don't know. I mean, I could. I could kind of envision that, you know, oh, mercy. <laughs> I, mean, I have no problem with that. <laughs> I could pretty much imagine all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except well, for, okay, oh, God, what's his name? Is it Bastion, the one that, that smoke, that kind of floats around and is smoky? Or, uh, no. No, that's, uh, oh, shoot. Of course, we can't come up with the name right now. All right, I got to look it up. Overwatch characters. It's not like I have an app here. <laughs> what? You don't have an app? Uh, Zenyatta? Reaper. Oh, Reaper. Okay. Yeah. He's the one that's got that, that kind of raspy. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of like wisps in and then he can wisp out. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure what kind of porn he would be in. <laughs> but, um, you know, or... You know, Soldier 76 is just too on the nose as being a porn star. <laughs> okay, I can see it. Sure, why not? Um, I mean, the the obvious one is Widowmaker, right? This is like, whenever you hear this thing, you go, there's a bunch of Widowmaker stuff aren't that out there, isn't there? Because she's the, she's the sexualized character. Br- Blizzard has even admitted that, right? Oh, yeah. So it's... It's it's obvious she's going to be out there, but, but some of the other ones, like May, for instance, is like uh, not so sure, <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah, May's kind of yeah, she's uh she's kind of childlike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like uncomfortable if she was in one of those. Like, uh, no, I I feel like I'm looking at something wrong here. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Okay, yeah, Bastion is a robot, so forget him, yeah. unless you're into robot porn. So Hanzo, I'm not sure about Junkrat, but, I'll, you know, he's got that peg leg. There's really... <laughs> I'm I'm getting off of this. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah do that. <sighs> but I, one last thing. Especially if he yells out, fire in the hole! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, you know... There's there's nothing hotter than a woman with a rocket launcher, Farah. So anyhow, <laughs> you know, one of the commenters at, at the bottom of this article said, CC Capella should play Tracer and <laughs> Shasha Gray <laughs> should play Widowmaker. I don't disagree. And Sam's over there going, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> I only know who one of them is because they she reported for G four all the time, and I think she's Sasha. retired at this point. Yeah, yeah, Sasha's actually retired, and she's a multimillionaire. So yeah, so she can do whatever the hell she wants to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, interesting statistics. Again, 
Top country searching for Overwatch, South Korea. Of course. <laughs> um, and another thing it said was Pornhub found similarities between people who search for Overwatch and people with My Little Pony fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't stop there. They also took a look at which types of gamers were actually searching for Overwatch porn. At the top of the list were hardcore gamers with role-playing game uh, fans coming in a distant second, and some fans of shooters and adventure games were searching for Overwatch porn as well, along with casual gamers in general. On the other end of the spectrum were sports gamers and driving and racing gamers who likely just aren't big fans of Overwatch in general. <laughs> but South Korea. Mm -mm. <laughs> no wonder North Korea hates them and hates us too. Because <laughs> we know how to get our porn on. <laughs> it right down to Overwatch. <clears throat> if the porn is not a porn of the great leader, then you do not have your porn. <laughs> Hey, they said last year's hit, Fallout 4, also caused some pretty staggering fluctuations in the site's traffic. <laughs> they said it's not that gamers were searching for Fallout 4 porn, it's that they weren't ser searching for porn at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> the release of the game caused a 10% <laughs> drop in the Pornhub traffic. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's beautiful. I can That's either play insane. Fallout 4 or I can go watch porn. Screw it. The porn will be here. I'm going to play Fallout 4. <laughs> I get that a lot more than the idea of... It, it, okay, I'm, I'm going to call a subculture of people out here because these dudes need to be called on. It's, it's not like I had a friend that recently had this situation and I'm still bitter about it for her behalf. Not at all. But there was a guy... Those guys that decide to choose a video game over a relationship, no, just no, okay? Wow, that's a you're, thing? You're sad. You're a sad human being, <laughs> and you need to realize what's going on here. <laughs> I don't care if you're playing on a multiplayer game and you have things to grind out. Your, your, your tribe can wait, okay? Okay. <laughs> Well, you're supposed to incorporate your significant other into your video game playing. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you think I, my marriage has stayed so strong for so long? Yeah, but, you both you played WoW, so. Love yeah. you, honey. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did for close to 10 years. Well, I guess to to be realistic, we it was more somewhere around about the seventh year we probably started petering off. That poor choice of words. Um, it tapering off. So, uh, and that's just because it really got to the point where the game was starting to be boring. Uh, but in the early days, oh, yeah, that's, I mean, we were right there together and uh, oh, always yeah. playing. So, and we even talked about that, that it made more sense. And you and I have talked about, it, I've told you this before, it made more financial sense for us to pay $30 a month to play this video game together and be at home on Friday and Saturday nights, even though we may be imbibing, but we're not mm -hmm. out at the bar, getting into fights, getting into trouble, possibly driving and drinking, which would be stupid, you know, that kind of stuff. So there, there were definitely some, some very positive aspects to spending our time together in that, that world. Plus the real mm -hmm. world sucked, so, you know, it was, <laughs> it was a great place to be. <laughs> yeah. My oh. girlfriend wasn't stuck on satellite internet. We've talked about this. Chances are she'd play some heroes with me, but she's stuck on satellite, Ooh. so it really doesn't work for that. <laughs> she's in the situation you were in. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just throw her a line? <laughs> she's too far away. I don't... <laughs> Can she get cell service? Actually, no. Not where she's sitting. Wow, she's she really, she really was in the same situation that you were in. Yeah, totally. It's... We get each other. This is why. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine? How did, how did this young love start? Well, we were both in a dead zone. I had no internet. <laughs> except be high, social with each other. <laughs> high latency internet. So we actually had to go and talk to one another face to face. <laughs> what it is this perfect, face to face you we, hear of? <laughs> but we got through it. <laughs> we got through it. And now we've... <laughs> Now we have terabit internet. 
Oh, God. Of course, this would be 30 years down the road, so. Of course. (laughs) She's not a ginger, is she? Yes and no. She's a plant. (laughs) Great, so your kids are not going to have any souls. All right. (laughs) I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Sorry. Where are you at, kids? All right, let's move on. Um, You brought this one. Over drone over Middle Ages festival taken down by a spear. Now I I highly appreciate. I have never actually gotten to go to a Renaissance fair before. I have always wanted to. There's even one that's over in Ohio that I could probably, if I caught a ride, because I do have friends that attend it from time to time. Especially if they took me during the time travel weekend that they have every year, because mm-hmm. then I could just show up waving my sonic screwdriver around the place. <laughs> <laughs> and no one would question it. <laughs> I, actually, everyone would question it, but they would be in character. So anyway, point is. Um, but the be- the best way that I could bring this across is just read the way that the writers over at Nerdist put this. <clears throat> so someone decided to go over a Renaissance fair with a drone, and here's the text for it. What? Did thou, didst thou thinketh that ye modern gadgets of wizardry and dark magic would rule the skies over all mankind with impunity? Goats and monkeys! For whilst we have proven such in the ways of the gods, thou art but men. And even the false idols of steel and bronze forged by men may be strucketh down from a warrior skilled in the ways of ye olden times. Translation? A man at a Russian Middle Ages festival took down a drone with a freaking a drone with a freaking spear. <laughs> we came across this classic battle of man versus technology at Popular Science, where they shared the video from the YouTube channel. Well, oh, sorry. Let me just throw that in the old Google Translator for you from the YouTube channel UAV at Lipstick, and it is from the point of view of the drone itself. The participant, clad in the appropriate attire to make an entire encounter of all the better, ignoring the mock battle everyone else was focused on, quickly grabbed a spear and rushed towards the drone. He took just one small step and heaved it, taking the drone down like a true marksman. Now the makers of this video were kind enough to put the drone kill shot right at the start and also included a slowed down close up at the end. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested in what a Russian Middle Ages festival looks like, then watch the rest of the video too. It seems like a wonderful time was had by all. Well, except for the guy that owns the drone, I guess. But even then, he got an awesome video out of it. So, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's pretty awesome because I'm playing it right now. And then there's the slow mo. Mm-hmm. Yep, the guy's in the garb. There goes the spear. You spear chunker, you. And you see some of the people in the crowd go, "Oh my god, I can't believe he's doing this!" <laughs> it's like, no, no, he didn't, did he? Oh. <laughs> Yes, he did. <clears throat> it's just gorgeous because it's it it's I it, different Renaissance fairs apparently have different rules as regards to how much you acknowledge present day time, mm-hmm. right? Um, I mean, I found out something interesting about it. It's almost like how Disney operates. I didn't know this, but when you're a Disney actor, there are several rules you can't do, like. Um, you pretty much are in modern times, I think, but you cannot acknowledge other properties. So if someone says, do you have an iPhone? You'll have no idea what they're talking about because Disney characters don't know about iPhones, um, things like that. So it's it's interesting how all these different ways of acting and stuff take the let's not acknowledge this and let's not acknowledge that. So in a Renaissance festival, I guess if the man was fully in character, as mm-hmm. it were, what be this bewitchery that flies above us? <laughs> <laughs> he took it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <clears throat> good point, though. Very good point. Mm. But the video was actually awesome. I mean, some of, some of the shots uh, that that thing could get. And kudos to the guy con- controlling it, because I can't fly one of these damn things to save my life. Uh-huh. Of course, this could have been one of the more expensive ones that had like auto stabilization and GPS uh, auto return and all this other kind of stuff, or where you basically say you program in a pattern and let it just fly around and it record the video. Mm. 
All right, final story. First penis transplant in the U.S. was performed in Boston. Good night, everybody. Yep. <laughs> it's been great. Great show. We'll see you Wednesday. Um, <laughs> when I first when I first was talking about this story earlier today to my wife, and she was like, you know, she gave me that look. Like, really? <laughs> it's like, really? And, of course, she, she, I'm pretty confident, and, and she really told me this, you know, if you were thinking from the perspective of just being vain, like, you know, my package isn't big enough, so I need another one that's bigger kind of thing, right. and that's ridiculous. But, no, oh, yeah. this particular guy, now, granted, the age kind of got me, but then once I figured out uh, what the situation was, I kind of understood. Mm. But his name is Thomas Manning. He's 64. And in 2012, he was um, had his penis removed due to penile cancer. Right. So some surgeons got together and they started looking at some things and figured out that uh, I guess there's a such thing as uh, penis donation. I mean, I guess if you can donate all of your, your your organs like your heart and your kidney and your liver and things like that, I guess, you know, penis is right up there too. Yeah. <laughs> so. In theory. In theory. But these surgeons in Boston, they perform this, this penile transplant. It's the very first one in the United States. Um, and they say that it's a procedure that soon could help severely wounded soldiers, hmm. which is kind of cool. So, yeah. you know, it's. There, there's more than just okay. This this guy lost it because of cancer. Once we've done this, uh, we, we can we can help other people, which is great. And so far, there are no signs of rejecting the transplant, according to the surgeons. Um, quote: Today I began. This is from Thomas Manning. Today I began a new chapter filled with personal hope and hope for others who have suffered genital injuries, particularly for our service members who put their lives on the line and suffer serious damage as a result. Mm. So that's pretty cool. He was a bank courier. Uh, He underwent the operation on May 8th and 9th. The surgeons who led the 15-hour procedure are Curtis Citrullo Citrullo and Dickens Co. And they said that they were cautiously optimistic that Manning will regain full urinary and sexual function. He's up doing well. He's out of bed. Emotionally, he's doing amazingly well. He's a very positive person. <laughs> so kudos. Took him three and a half years of research and teamwork to finally get to the point where they could do this surgery. Well, yeah, that's a that's a complex spot. I mean, we don't we don't think of it that way for obvious reasons, but there there's a lot of blood vessels. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. There. There's a lot of stuff in your stuff, man. That's <laughs> I was painfully aware of how much stuff was in my stuff when I had my vasectomy in two, 2001. Well, yeah, that's, that, that'll yeah. make you aware. <laughs> painfully aware. <clears throat> mm. For six months afterwards, I was painfully aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's the first one in the United States. It's not the first one in the world. A team of South African surgeons performed what is believed to be the first successful penis transplant transplant in the world in a nine-hour operation in December of 2014. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, according to Stellenbosch University, they said last spring that the patient had regained full function in the transplant in Oregon. So that's the one that was done in December of 2014. And we know this can be done because it's it's the transplant thing that's new because we've... We've had scenarios where people have lost their junk and had their junk put back on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it, Lorraine and Bob like, anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's <laughs> You've been bobicized. Anyway. There was there was a horrible joke and uh I think it was an episode of Eureka where they said, "Oh, you know, cuz they were having computer problems and the guys the tech guy said, "Well, it might be the Lorraine and Bobbit virus." And then the guy just sort of looked at him like, "What?" Well, it turns your hard drive into a three and a half inch floppy. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I kind of I sporadically watch Eureka, so I never saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> and he just gave him this look. He didn't even spark. He's like, God, you know, I'll get back to this now. 
Oh, the only thing that would have made that better is because I know Will Wheaton actually guest starred in that show. If he'd been the one to actually deliver that line, yeah, that totally. that, that would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. I think that was in the earlier seasons because uh, what's his name was still in charge of the place at that point. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> wow, <laughs> turns your hard drive into a three and a half inch floppy. Yep. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> well, I'm taking my three and a half inch floppy, and I'm going home. So <laughs> that's that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Sam, where's all your stuff? What are you up to? Where can people find all your great, fantastic stuff? And be dang sure, because if you don't do it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Patreon, go support this dude. He's got great content. So you better talk about it, because you know, if you don't talk about it, I'm gonna talk about it. Well, even if you talk about it, I'm still gonna talk about it. So talk about it. Okay, so you can find all of my social media links and stuff like that at about.me slash labtech7. If you want to find all my podcasting content and stuff like that when I'm not here, you can go to tscn.tv. And if you want to find my Patreon where you can donate to making that stuff carry on without any problems regardless of what happens, then you can go to tscn.tv slash support. That's right. Go over there now. Give $5 at a minimum. <laughs> 10 because you probably are, are are at a better station in life because otherwise Sam's going to send you an email and say that the warmth of your thoughts probably did not match your <laughs> contribution. Okay? Just do it. If I knew that everyone that donated to it would get that joke, that would be a <laughs> nice running gag that would happen. Just put that at the end of the video. I, I, saw, what, I saw what you did there. Uh, the warmth of your <laughs> well, wishes didn't match that, you know? <laughs> That's right. Uh, definitely. Oh, okay. Well, everything I'm doing is uh, positioned and kind of resting and probably half drunk or something. I'm not sure. Over at slant.fm, <laughs> all my social media stuff can be found at about.me slash gdadkissin. And if you have any feedback, the email address is feedback at slant.fm. If you want to leave a voicemail, the number is 313-718-2557, 313-718-2557. And yes, that is a totally different number than the call-in number, so don't call the call-in number except during the live show. Otherwise, it'll just ring and ring and ring and ring and just give you an earache, probably. <laughs> so, remember, we record this show live each Monday and Wednesday, now at 6 p.m., because it just makes sense. I don't know. Probably more people can actually watch it at this time. Who to thunk it? <clears throat> So, have a great Tuesday, and we'll see you Wednesday for another episode of What's. Everybody out there, take care. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.